The city of Johannesburg is looking to establish a tactical response unit to handle the municipality's continuous high levels of crime and to increase the force of the South African police services. Among other things, the unit will work on recovering illegal firearms, combating illegal mining, preventing drug proliferation and reclaiming hijacked buildings. We're now joined by the MMC for Public Safety in Johannesburg, Dr. Mtrini Twaku, to tell us more about this unit. Thank you very much, sir, for your time this afternoon. Thank you very much for no me. doubt this will be welcomed by some residents of Johannesburg who want yeah. to feel a little bit safer. So perhaps tell us more about uh, <coughs> the tactical response unit, which is called Manje, Namsanje, tactical response unit. <laughs> no, thank you very much, uh, Titia. Uh, well, the uh, the as an EFF deployed MMC is that one of the the, the points or the commitments that the EFF said was that we need to ensure that number one we increase the number of, of the roadblocks so that we can recover firearms and all those things and then the other one was to say we must uh, capacitate the law enforcement so that we're able to to deal with the issues of crime um, the crime drugs and all of that so <clears throat> that was actually showing that that commitment we said in, in, into the manifesto so, if you look at the, at the JMPD, JMPD, many people don't understand it, but what is it? JMPD, um, it's, it, it, it's, a, its mandate is a tri-band. What do you mean by tri-band? Tri-band is, it does traffic law enforcement, which is doing very well. Number two, by law enforcement. Of course, there are issues with that, uh, uh, because now they've got like, not enough manpower you know, to decentralize it, because it is central. It was decentralized before. But due to the arrangement, um, the working arrangement that was established about uh, three years back, but I will explain it at some point about that, then you find that um, there was less men, uh, manpower uh, in terms of that they'd be able to deploy in each region. In, in Johannesburg, you got uh, region A to G. Um, so now their, their manpower got reduced, so they had to centralize it. But we're going to look into that because we want to decentralize that, that by law. Uh, in enforcement into regions like your Midrand, your Orange Farm, your mm -hmm. Soil, so that they can deal with the uh, illegal dumpings, your, 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 your you know, uh, it's your legal dumpings and your, uh, uh, you know, building control and, uh, you know, making sure that people are sticking into those, those bylaws. But the, the third component, which is your crime prevention and combating unit, has, n has sort of never been done before. Uh, when, I, when we were talking with the, the directors which were there before, you know, you've got the directors which were there about the poor director Lepus and, and all the other directors that have been there for a very long time, they're saying that they've established the traffic law, the, the, you know, the directorate, <coughs> the bylaw one, but the crime prevention one is sort of, um, you know, has been lagging behind. You know. So what we did now is to really um, retrain. We've actually had a selecting criteria. We've taken some of the, uh, the, 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 what you call the, the JMPD officers, retrained them. We've taken them to the shooting range. They were, you know, reconditioned their mind in terms of you're not going to be dealing with traffic anymore, like a lot. You are going to be doing the crime. So what we've been busy doing now in the last month is the training and also developing a proper standard operating procedure also business plan and key performance indicators because this unit we don't want to launch it this crime prevention unit and then it goes out there you you're not sure what it's actually doing mm. so we want to say that if you've got these units deployed in region a to g they need to be going in and they need to be searching and seizure they need to be uh, uh, um, working with the local uh, communities and also share and i mean local community obviously we share some intelligence uh, where are the areas where you can find drugs, what has been happening in, in the community. So these ones, uh, they will be working inside. They will be going around into the communities and, 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 and all of that and doing that, that, that work. And then, so it's a crime. So how it works, it's a crime prevention unit, which is in the old region. And then from there, you've got a tactical unit after that, Johannesburg Tactical Reaction Unit. That one is a swing unit. For example, if you have issues like the, the cash in transit, the hijackings, uh, the kidnappings and also special operation. Let's say we want to hit a place in uh, in Soweto 
where there's been alleged that there are drugs or maybe in town and all of that. Mm. So that take away will be, will be dealing with the operation. It will be a force multiplier now okay. in terms of that. Yeah. How many, uh, how many people comprise that team? So in total, total, even with the it's 389. Okay, great. Yes, and we just, uh, um, uh, um, we have cars now, okay? So no one will be caring about cars. So <laughs> was that an issue? Yes, it was an issue. Why? A very long time. It was the issue with the contract. Um, 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 so, um, look, we, we are still rolling it out because they're not enough. Um, not so, enough cars? Yeah, not enough cars currently in terms of your regions. For example, in F1, yesterday I joined some of the officers in F1. They're still having combis. That's why you see JMPD stuff in, in, in combis like sardines, which is, I found it to be very uh, dangerous. So we are rolling them out. We are rolling them out, but now we just prioritize it when it's time this, this new unit because we want to go, we wanted to hit this ground running quickly because people are getting killed in Deep Slot. People are getting actually killed in Orange Farm. So Orange Farm is going to be, uh, we're going to make that, that place very small. And I, I, I appeal to the community and to mm -hmm. the people out there is that uh, there will be a preservation period where we're going to be dealing with these people fire by fire. So I don't want to have complaints here and all of the, hey, what is happening? Why are you doing what you're doing? We're going to find them. What's the preservation period? Preservation period is that, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to do all means necessary to go and find these criminals. So, what so, is so if the criminals are shooting at the, at, the, at the police or are killing our people, we'll shoot to kill. Okay. Eye for an eye approach. Like, we will we'll never negotiate with any type of criminal because what is happening now in, in Johannesburg, I mean, people are dropped, are dropped like, like flies. I mean, uh, we were responding to a lot of uh, issues in Alex where our patrollers, because you've got patrollers, which are the informal patrollers, which are not being supported by the, you know, by the, you know, they don't have any, any sort of income. So the JMPD has been working with them very closely in Alexandra. We've just established other patrollers in Deep Slot. Um, we are making inroads and so on, but there's been patrollers which are there before, but we're expanding it everywhere now because those become our eyes and ears. Mm. Now, thugs and criminals and all those, uh, you know, who've been doing uh, some, some uh, criminal activities, they see that now these patrollers are working with JMPD effectively because we are arresting, we are, we are getting arrested, we are finding firearms, now they are targeting them. Mm. Uh, they've killed uh, four in Alex, or four to five already in Alex. Uh, there was another one which was killed last week in, 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 uh, in uh, Orange Farm uh, and all of us. So we are just want to send a message with this unit starting from the 10th of November on uh, JNPD uh, Crime Prevention Unit and Tactical Response is not going to be negotiating with any you know, the, the criminals. There will be nightlife. Uh, uh, most of the uh, uh, um, taverns which are non-compliant, they will be closed. Uh, they, they, they must just get ready, you must comply properly and also you must ensure that the, the noise is at the acceptable, acceptable level. And, uh, you know, so, so yeah, there's going to okay. be a lot of, of that thing that's going to be happening. It, it, it sounds like also Gukuningi, right? But I, no. I, I just want to find out in terms of the engagement that has been happening with the community because yeah. you also speak, when you speak of the JMPD, the unit that deals with the enforcement of bylaws. Yeah. Bylaws are not by and large in some parts of the country adhere to yes, right yes. so you'll find that maybe your neighbor has opened up a drinking spot and they're mm. blaring the music and it's matric exams and now yeah. the whole street must suffer or whatever so what is it that the community needs to know right have you been sensitizing community mm. members who are, these are the people that are going to be coming in this is how they are going to to work these are the prescripts of the law under which they can operate because also mm. you do run the danger of someone sure being identified or do do so 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 but no. that person is not necessarily a criminal yeah. no look we I mean we will do our work with uh, caution uh, uh, mark my words and we said to the guys we have to do a lot of intel work um, we, we actually gonna be using lots of the the patrollers we I mean we're working very close with, with the uh, patrollers and yes we we had some consultation meetings if you remember when I started in the public safety department, a, we went around in Deep Slot, we went Orange Farm, and what the people were crying about was crime. Mm. Like, uh, and also the, the I mean, the, I, I, I know that uh, sometimes the, the SA police will have a problem with the vehicles and all of that, with the manpower. So we are coming in as a force multiplier with the SAPS. 
um, 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 yeah, so, so I mean, uh, um, so there were those complaints and they said, look, we understand that you, you do traffic management and by law, but uh, we have a problem with crime. That's why you've seen that we've been also involved in terms of the Amazamazama, we've been involved in terms of the building inspection and, com and, and combating, you know, sort of the, the calm. So we're quite showing them what they can actually do that. But what, what, what we've seen as the leadership was that I think that uh, a JMPD just need to be trained, but they have a mandate too, so that they can deal with crime and work hand in hand with the, with the, with subs. And I want to appeal to my colleagues in the SAPS. This is not a competition. We want to work with them. Okay, we understand the challenges that they are having. Uh, remember, JMPD. The only thing that we can do is to arrest. But uh, in terms of, of detention and, in, and investigation and writing of the dockets, this is still um, the function okay. of SAPS. So we have to forge a relationship. I appeal to the leadership of, of SEPS that, uh, you know, our people really, really, they, they are in, in, in trouble. They've they really been uh, crying up about crime. For example, in, um, in, Jer in Jerusalem, if you remember, Jerusalem, they ran away from their homes. They went into the police stations. So it was very sad to me to, to see that uh, people have to run away from their homes, run away from the criminals in the Zamazama. So we've been engaging with them. We've been to Ivory Park. Lots of criminality, people are being dropped, right? So there's going to be a lot of work that's going to be done. Lots of uh, um, shippings are going to be closed uh, that are non-compliant. We're going to also do the, the enforcement um, of the bylaw. Uh, for example, there's a certain limit of sound that you, you must have. It's, um, you know, it's, uh, if you remember, well, it's 85 decibels. And then we, with my colleague, Amy Makofen, which is MMC for health and social development. She's got those inspectors. So at night, when we go out as well, we're doing what is called Operation Night Life. We, we, we go with them. So we are going to go into an area, we listen into the sounds of the, you know, uh, you, you, there's a machine that you use. If it's over that, mm -hmm. that uh, limit, then we will close it. So there's gonna, we're going to be stepping at, the, at people's toes, by the way. Like, I can attest to you that the issue of closing of uh, illegal operating shippings worked very well. They can you can attest that in, uh, in Alex, um, in, in Deep Slot, if you remember in Deep Slot, there was a, a huge program of crime there. When the JMPD moved in, we, uh, we started to, all our units were there, we started to close the, 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 the shippings, you know, and then enforcing our bylaws and all of that. So people started to appreciate that. And all of a sudden, the crime just went down mm. like that. Okay. So also the police visibility is very important. Um, yeah, well, so... But we still have a problem in Johannesburg Central, which is the, the I'd like for us to, 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 to get into that in okay. a few moments. We just right. quickly need to go uh, and get a glass of water. We're we'll back with you in a few moments. Do stay with us, please. Okay, let's finish off our conversation with the MMC for Public Safety uh, in Johannesburg, Dr. Mtrini Tswaku, as he details efforts to combat crime, which is quite stubborn in the city of Johannesburg. A new unit... Um, yeah, it's new, ne? Is that, new is that unit, right? Yeah, yeah. A new unit called Manje Namsanje Tactical Response Unit has been launched, comprising of some 300 members. Now, the following are hotspots in Johannesburg. Mm. Hillbro, Berea, Yeovil, Joburg CBD, Jabert Park, Park Station, MTN, Small Street, High Court, Carlton Center, Central Johannesburg, Downtown. If you are familiar with those spaces, yeah. you close your eyes and you're like, Nio Kalagupi. No, look, uh, you know what you turn on a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with the small steps. Mm. Yeah, one. So um, we, we, I don't want to really divulge the, the things that we're going okay. to do, uh, some of them. But what, you, what used to work before in those small streets, it's small streets and quads and, and all of those MTN ranks, we, we used to deploy an undercover unit. So that unit will be resuscitated again. It worked very well. You know, with some issues and, and politics, and, and the unit was, dis was actually disassembled, or you can say uh, disarmed. So we, we, we got police which are on foot, um, which are unmarked, or you said with, with clothes, with the, you know, the civilian clothes. So it, it worked very well. So we're going to re establish those. Not all the unit that you see is going to be wearing our tactical gear, others are going gonna to be going with unmarked cars. So we are aware of those three, of those hot spots in Johann, in Johannesburg, uh, your your Hillbro, um, in, in Jobek. The Jobek Park, uh, they used to have what is called a mounting unit horses, 
So those horses there, when I, when I actually got in, they're actually getting fed there. And I've been asking in terms of, but why are these horses are not patrolling parks? Were well, they supposed to be doing that? So we are going to be uh, uh, unleashing them as well. But horses need to be manned as well. Are Sorry? People, horses need to be manned. Are the people that... Yeah, but uh, Okay. Yeah, we've got people. <laughs> it's just that you need, to, you, you need to deploy someone that actually understands, have a strategy in terms of what needs to be, able to, you know, to, to be done. And also, over and above, um, um, like what we're going to be doing now in terms of this crime prevention and combating unit, we're also going to unveil... Um, or a, a reconfigured freeway patrol unit. And the, the question that I have asked is that we've been dragged on Twitter, okay, on social media, on the issues that when the cash in transit happened there, uh, where were the police? Mm. So I had to ask the, the directors, where were we? I mean, the freeway patrol, uh, you know, so, uh, that, well, they said that no, they were around and everything, and, and actually that's why they, they came and, you know, and, 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 and actually dealt with the, with the scene. But we are reorganizing ourselves in terms of that because we need to be focusing on M1 and also sort of the M1 and the N1 around the area. And we're going to man all intersections. All intersections will be manned and all of those things. So yes, um, if you look at the stats there, if I can go back in terms of the, of the crime stats, Johannesburg Central is the center. That's where crime is at. Actually, mm -hmm. it is the highest, followed by Hillbrook, by Yeovil, mm -hmm. Ivory Park, Alex, and all of that. And Honeydew, by the way. Yeah. Honeydew also, yeah, those areas of Zan Spritz and all of that. So our, our approach will be more scientifically based. We're going to look at the, at, at the stations, uh, the police station with the highest crime, and ensure that we deal with actually those. Okay. So yes, um, but yeah, but also what we did, uh, remember, on, I said there's a working arrangement that was there three years back in terms of the shift system. It's a four-day in and four-day out system. So we've, uh, we've, we've spoken to the, we've been in, in, in conversation with the unions to say, look, can we able, let's say, to put, to, to put a standby allowance. Standby allowance will actually make at least uh, the guys to work over time. Because remember, they moved into the other shift because they were getting tired, they were getting exhausted and overworked. Mm. So for you to be able to get more people out, we've got about 6,000. Actually, we've got more, like almost 6,000 uh, HHMPD officers. But, you know, due to the amount of work, they, 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 shift, they went into a shift called four day in, four day out. But now for us to be able to get all the, the guys out, we must put something on the table. So we had to uh, put more money for them, a STEM allowance. And I encourage that um, uh, we must, in, even in SEPs, they are actually suffering the, the same thing, mm -hmm. give the, the police money uh, uh, so that, I mean, they're able to work. You know, so I mean, uh, okay. it's, so the guys are going to be out. They we, we've, we've put them into the flexi hours, on on the parting last parting shot. How is this thing going to help? By the way, is that taking them out into the flexi hours? Were you aware, or do you know that between four o'clock and eight o'clock in the evening, in the afternoon, and eight o'clock in at, at night, that period, there's no law enforcement on the ground. Between between four o'clock in the afternoon, four o'clock. Four p.m. Four p.m. And 8, and, 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 and 8 p.m. There's no police because... No JMPD? No, no. There's no security forces. Oh. And there's none because remember, it's a, it's a six-hour shift, six to six. Yeah. So by four or five, you're going to your post to go and change over. Mm. And then you have to, from change over six o'clock, half past six, you do a parade. And then from six o'clock to seven, you're going to your post. Mm. So criminals have, have found that that if you look at the, at the graph, the, the, the lots of the criminality increases yeah, around that time. time. So this unit will be actually be a swing unit. Will actually be at it, its peak, its highest peak will be around that time between four and, and eight, and also midnight, uh, between ten o'clock and one o'clock, and also from four o'clock in the morning up until nine o'clock. Mm -hmm. We've seen these areas where the the, 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 the crime people are getting marked. People are going to work, you know, people are going where they go work in the morning and when people are coming back from work, especially in your CBD coming from the bank city, mm. they get marked in those passages, chokehold and all of that. So that's why I get it. In this department, we're going to use a scientific based approach in terms of covering crime. We're not going to be all over the show. We're going to be uh, having a proper operation center and all of that. Okay. I want to show so should that. We, should we check in with you in about uh, yeah. three months' time? Three months' time, yeah. yeah. This is, is, is varying because yeah. from yeah. what we're hearing, it, it yeah. does sound yeah. like a much needed intervention. Yes. So I, we'll I want to show in. them. Uh, I want to show them that in the EFF, 
deployed a MMC or Republic Rep. We, we don't just promise, we have to commit. So this is actually the commitment that, that the EF has said that we're going to have this law enforcement uh, 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 um, uh, unit that is with dealing with that. So uh, we wanted to really show them that uh, we mean what you say, we mean business. Uh, and yeah. it is one, it's one of the manifestos that uh, actually we have, a, uh, if you look at the EFF manifesto, it's got all those, uh, it's like action, action orientated. And if you look when we came in as an MMC up until now, we tick a box, this is done, this is done, this is done, actually within a year. So this one here is a very critical one. Uh, it is the one that has actually been overdue in the whole country. We hope that maybe the whole municipalities and the country will, will follow suit. It's a, it is indeed a critical one um, because politics is a revolving door, right? Yeah. So even beyond the EFF, because there's only one South Africa, yeah. and it's it's in our it's in all our interest, and more so when we speak of combating climate. <laughs> but this country mm. has to work. So beyond e politics, yeah. right? so we have to get the South Africa administration. Tina, when we come in, we put policy in place. We look at a manifesto, um, a manifesto that you shall fight crime, you shall increase and you, you, you shall have law enforcement and, and, and power so that you can deal with drugs and, and, and all those things. And then you, you, you have to change that into a business plan. How are you going to do it? What are the key performance in indicators? And leave it there and lock it. Then you take it to council, council adopts it. Now, is these ones here, these administrators, ah, even if it changes, ask, ask they must ensure that good it's we're done. Not, we're not here to <laughs> talk about that. You know? yeah. We're not here to bash someone. No, no, we're, we're not bashing. Someone. I think <laughs> yeah. what is important for us yeah. as South Africans and what we care about is mm. that even beyond the EFF, beyond the ANC, beyond mm. the DA, beyond Ududuzili, beyond mm. anybody, mm. that this here country works, that mm. we feel safe, that you can go to the shop and yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you're fine, that you can drive anywhere and you know that you're fine. Yeah. That if something happens, you, you are taken care of because sure. in this country, in, that goes beyond it, you yeah. and I, you know, as administrators. Sure, sure. In, in England, yeah, South yeah, Africans yeah. are taking care of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. like uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Green. We're going to check in with you in about three months' time to see how this unit is faring.